It's been a couple of weeks, but we're back with React Court. It's been a while. By the way, go ahead and make your trade. Fund your account with up to $3,500 per day and start trading instantly. Anybody else interested in dollar cost averaging uh, over a million dollars into your account in the next calendar year? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> Anybody else got a, got, a, got a cool million they're trying to parcel out in $3,500 uh, increments on Quest Trade? There you go. Um, we're back uh, with React Court. It's been a couple of weeks. Don't sign up for a Quest Trade. Sign up for Well Simple Cash. The, the referrals are still coming in. Drip, drip, drip. Um, unfortunately, this one has been deleted. Am I the asshole for being hurt after my friend said I helped her come out as gay? And then removed and also given the asshole tag. But I try to respect other people. Finally, at this point in my life... I, I don't see the need to, um, g you know, go into the, the deep web to dunk on them further. It is what it is. I, I should have been here earlier, but it happens. How about this? This one's kind of driving me crazy, man, when I saw this one. Am I the asshole for refusing to open the car door for my, the, the door for my husband and forcing him to spend the night in the garage? That seems bad. And she's not the asshole somehow. I mean, I, I kind of feel like she... I, we got to find out how. My husband recently... Female 29, male husband 33. It checks out, okay? Hey, everybody call off the dogs. For six weeks, this is going to be the age difference between myself and my wife. Between November and January of this year. So I don't want to hear any monk ass age uh, difference, you pieces. He's been feeling upset ever since. Oh, sorry, he got relevant detail. He got kicked out of his job and decided to sue his former boss for misjudgment. He's been feeling upset ever since. He really worked hard to get his position and seeing years of work go to waste was devastating for him. His friends have been taking him out to cheer him up and let off some steam. The problem is that he'd be gone for hours and show up late at night drunk. He did it two times this week. He came home at 2 a.m. while drunk and made noise because he expected me to open the door for him while I was asleep. I couldn't wait for him and stay up late because unlike him, I have work and other responsibilities. Sounds like maybe there's a little bit of resentment involved. Unlike him, I have work. Look, that's like an insult, but... It's true, like, it, at least that hits. Other responsibilities, that hurts. That's, that's an unnecessary, motivated by anger comment to put at the end there just to make him seem like a loser. Which, let's read further. Um, when he complained about how I should be quick to open the door for him, I told him next time he comes home late at 2 a.m. and up then I won't be opening the door for him, period. He said he won't stay out late again and that my challenge was accepted. Did he really say challenge accepted? Because if this is the case, you are not the asshole for making him sleep in the garage. Did he do the challenge accepted? Anyway, last night when he went out with his buddy, he dropped him off at outside at 2.30 a.m. I was awake at the time. When my husband kept ringing the bell and then knocking on the door, I remained in bed and refused to open the door. He called my phone telling me he was outside and I needed to open up. I asked him to tell me what time it was and he said, it's 7.30, it's still early, come on, open up the door. One of the most brazen lies you will ever hear in your entire life. To just... Look, if you got the persuasion 100 to get that off, more power to you, but that's <laughs> like the most uh, verifiably false lie you could ever... You couldn't have just said like it's 11.30, like you had to pick a time when maybe the sun is still up. Um, he kept calling over and over and then knocked several times, then he stopped. Turns out he slept in the garage on the floor. He had a huge argument with me, calling me petty and ridiculous for keeping him out of his house and refusing to open the door for him. I reminded him that I didn't have to stay up every week to wait for him and open the door for him. He said he forgot his key, and I was clearly trying to prove a point here, but he said it's his house. I should never keep him out of it like that. He told me to apologize and say I'll never do it again. But I walked out the kitchen. I walked out the kitchen while he was talking, which pissed him off more. Then he said he was going through rough times and I was making it worse and being unsupportive. Okay. 
I am going to say, based on, there's no edits here, which I respect. For me, this is a big everybody sucks here. Let's go over the, the facts and, and my interpretation of the case, okay? The husband sucks. There's no doubt. He is an asshole in this situation. Um, whether he's going through a tough time or not, he, uh, you know, who cares if you go out and you get uh, drunk with your friends, if you come in yourself, uh, phrasing, if you open the door yourself and have the means to, you know, sleep on the couch or whatever and not be as disruptive as you were, then, you know, that's a, you can still be frustrated, but that's a different story, you know? But to constantly be coming back and then um, not being able to enter the house, your wife has to open the door, you're waking her up at 2 a.m. just because you, uh, you know, are irresponsible. That's rude. And you promised you wouldn't do it again. And then you did it again. That makes you either the asshole for promising without having the intention to follow through, or alternatively, um, for having the intention but making no preparation whatsoever. This is an asshole move. Now, can I tell you, I don't actually think that he is the asshole for being mad that she didn't open the door. I feel like you as a spouse, <laughs> you have like an obligation to um, help your spouse out in a situation like that where they don't go... Uh, they don't have the means to get into the house. Like, I, I, even if, like, the, I'm I'm putting myself in like a, you know, in their shoes, right? We, Kate and I have had sleep schedule differences prior to the baby. You know, sometimes like I would go to bed at like midnight, and she would be doing some like savage type raid in Final Fantasy that went on a little later. Um, so I, I can relate to the the sleep schedule difference, and you know, being like, why are you making such you know, clackety clackety in the other room while I'm trying to sleep. However, um, you know, if, if she was like, Hey, I really need your help right now. Sorry to wake you up. And it was like an emergency on this level. You got to just bite the bullet. You have like a crappy sleep. And then the next day you have the moral high ground and you, you just come over the top in the argument and win easily. And then, you know, make, make your point much more known. <laughs> to like <laughs> make them feel bad about it and then hopefully it modifies their behavior and if it doesn't you can go from there i will say you know what i do agree with what chat's saying though that a, a 33 year old man forgetting the key to his own home enough that he has to wake up his wife at 2 a.m is mega cringe energy like i i i just don't understand do you not do the do you not do the 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 pants do you not do the 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 three pocket pat like every five minutes you're outside? You got a triple tap. You got a wallet. You got your phone. You got your keys. It's, it took me a while because I grew up in a pre cell phone era and I didn't carry my keys around. You know when I was a little kid, right? So I just had a little wallet tap until I was like fourteen, fifteen years old, and now you got the key tap as well, and then you get a phone tap in there too, and it's just like, how do you not have your keys? How do you not have your... I just don't understand. I do it five times a day. I'm going to be... I, I probably do it... I wouldn't be surprised... On a weekend day where I've been walking around, maybe we're out a little bit, I wouldn't be surprised if I did it 20 times a day. Easily. And you know, you do the tap, not just to make sure that it's there, but because, you know, when you go into like a bathroom and you can see the schedule of when the bathroom has been cleaned? It's like that... Because you can, not only are you like, oh, my wallet's missing or something. Now you go back into the ledger and you're like, the last time I did the tap, my wallet was there. I was at Best Buy. So I have lost my wallet somewhere between Best Buy and the next tap, which was 35 seconds later. So then you just mentally like map the 35 seconds that have passed. And you're like, oh, I left it on the counter when I paid for my cell phone case or something. You just, you're just, you're tapping nonstop. It's, it's, these are important data points. Okay. Anyway, a, a, a grown man forgetting his keys this much or getting so intoxicated he can't maintain the position of his keys is, is mega cringe. That's, that's, my, uh, that's my philosophy here. So, but I still think it's everybody sucks here. You know, you're married to the guy. You can't just lock him out of the house. That's like a divorceable moment. Like no, no jury on earth would be like, you know, based 
I think they would be like, you really let Major Husband sleep in the garage? <laughs> when you had already woken up to tell him you won't open the door? Like, it's one of those things where it's like you were so morally in the right. All you had to do was do the right thing, the ethical thing, and then everyone would be on your side. Instead, you went, I have cause to be upset, so I'm going to like hit you with Mjolnir. And now everybody's like 50-50. So I am, I'm a little surprised, honestly, that, that we have 64% not the asshole and only 22% everybody sucks here. Um, I, I would have thought there'd be more everybody sucks here, honestly. But the only thing I will say is like one of the things that on the internet is most despisable by the plurality is uh, breaking a promise or being inconsistent in any way with what you said you would do. Like, if you said you would murder somebody and then you didn't, it would still be like 50-50. People would be like, on the one hand, it's good he didn't commit a murder, but on the other hand, he promised. So, you know, it, it, it's a bit of a gray area. People are, they put a lot of value on never having any level of cognitive dissonance, which I think is a little bit unrealistic. But anyway, um, let me see here. He's a grown-ass man with a key stop opening up for him until he learns to take responsibility for himself and remembers his key, not the asshole. See, like this, I agree, for sure. I think there's a little, there's a step further, you know, which is like, she still should have opened up the door for him. He's sleeping on the garage floor. I don't know where they live, right? But he's sleeping on the garage floor in October. It's, it's been like six degrees here lately. <laughs> Like that would be that would we would wake up like insanely cold. Tomo, you doing okay back there? Honestly, I thought you would be, but not the asshole. He he said, "Challenge accepted." He said, "Challenge accepted," and didn't take his key. That's on him. He said the the the, the words of power. Not the asshole, but your husband. Your husband appears to be in a bad way after his job loss. Yes, for sure. Also, how do adults not have keys to their own homes? I'm getting, I'm getting mired in the minutia here a little bit, but this is what bothers me the most. Like, you ever think that this is like, um, this is a solution where you could just go to the dollar store and for like a dollar ninety nine, you could just get like a like a key ring or something. You could even attach it to your belt or something, man. It's not that stylish, but it's better than sleeping on the garage floor. It sounds like he needs counseling pronto before he develops alcoholism. Look, it's you can't say that from this data point. It's like he's well, he was out like two times this week. That's I mean, it's by the way, how did he get home? Was he riding in a car with a drunk driver? Did I ever tell you the story about how like this, this shit pisses me off? Okay, because it's like it is safe. But it's like such a high degree of like assumed guilt that it annoys me. But this story of I was at a house party uh, after uh, it was like spring break of my first year of college. And uh, when you got there, you had to put your car keys in like a, a, you know, the cabinet or something so that you didn't take your car and drive home drunk, which was not a risk to begin with. But anyway, I uh, got drunk at the party. Then I started to feel mighty ill. I was 18 years old, right? I was starting to feel mighty ill. And I was trying to, because other people were coming down with a little illness as well. It seemed like there might be something going around. Uh, I was trying to like solicit a ride to get home. And my friend's mom, who happened to be there, was like, sure, I'll drive you home. But to get keys from the, the person that was manning the key cabinet, I had to go through like the fucking third degree. They were like, I'm not going to give you your keys. You're, you're drunk. And I'm like, I know I'm drunk. I'm getting a ride home. I need my keys to get into my house. And they're like, I don't trust you. You could just be lying to me to get your keys so you can drive drunk. And then I was like, my friend's mom, the host's mom is like in her pajamas right now. She's downstairs. Do you think this is like part of this elaborate ruse? I just need you to give me the keys to my own house. 
And it, it, it took like, you know, 15 minutes of, of trying to convince them. Honestly, good friend, not, not at all. I just needed, I needed my own house keys. Not a, not a good friend in the slightest. They, they live in a world of delusional fear where they think, you know, people are constantly doing like a conspiracy to like, you know, jokes on them. Now I'm going to die. Anyway, I don't know. She was just, she was, I think she just got a little taste of power. And then she was like, this feels good. Bow down. You want your own house keys back? Go fuck yourself. I think that's, she, she can't be trusted in a position of authority. <clears throat> I wasn't bald back then. She wasn't intimidated by my scalp, okay? The, anyways, and apparently now she posts on Reddit. By the way, how did he get home? Was he riding in a car with a drunk driver? Probably. He should be in prison. Maybe for life. Um, not the asshole. Can we, can we get somebody that's like, you know, I, I just want the slightest degree of dissent here. Hi, so I've done this but on purpose with a deadbolt. I left a pillow and blanket on the stoop through the deadbolt and went to bed at 3 a.m., three hours after he said he was getting in an Uber right now and then stopped responding. Look, that's actually, I can relate. That's annoying. I would be annoyed as hell if Kate was like, I'm getting in an Uber and then three hours later she still was not home. But you can't. Look, I'm going to be the stereo. I'm going to be the classic example. Like, if a wife did this to her husband, people are like, that's an episode of Everybody Loves Raymond. If a husband did it to his wife, it's an episode of a new television program called The Worst Husbands on fucking Planet Earth. <laughs> you can't always get reverse the roles to, to, to come up with a point, but definitely like... If a wife locking her husband out culturally is kind of like, well, he did, he made a mistake and, you know, ha ha ha, I had to sleep on the stoop last night. You know how it is. If you're like, I, wa I locked my wife outside last night because she didn't come home by 2 a.m., you would be, people would be like, you are fucking crazy. You are insane. Now, I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying you locked your wife outside of the house. Are you crazy? Anyway. Um, mine was distraught and embarrassed. Begged me to never do it again. Part of the reason I did it, I was so furious I would have blown up when he did arrive and he'd have remembered none of it. Our solution was that next time I'd just leave instead. So I get a nice trip to a hotel. He gets to come home to a cold bed and sit and wonder if I'm ever coming back. Hasn't happened yet as we've worked on the reason he blacks out instead. Okay, so there, it, it's a nice ending, at least, that, they, that it's never happened since. But that's the kind of ultimatum that, that's, that's a bit troubling. Um, anyway. Hey, everyone stopping by to be negative. Please include stories of your superior coping skills with the alcoholic in your immediate family. Kay, thanks. So, it's so... Just so combative at all times. You know, it, it just annoys me. It's, it's combative when they're replying to, like, just the OP. Like, it's not like they're replying to somebody who said, like, hey, you know... You're an idiot. They're just like, uh, apropos of nothing at all. They're, well, I guess they're replying to the people who were in their DMs, so fair enough. I, info, why was your husband fired? They accused him of bribery and tampering with work files, which he never did. His former boss said he could get him in huge legal trouble, but decided to just let him go since he was one of the best workers at the company. My husband then filed a report and decided to sue his former boss for accusing him of something he didn't do and threatening legal actions. Eh, that seems just like your classic little... Your classic situation. <laughs> that old song and dance. The you, you bribed and tampered with work files, but you're such a good employee that instead of getting the law involved, I'm just going to fire you, and then you're going to sue me for accusing me of something I didn't do. Okay, sure. Everybody sucks here. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He sounds like he has a drinking problem, and obviously he should bring his key with him. But you were awake and should have just let him in and had a serious adult conversation with him about it. You were being petty. That's Phineas, finally. I, after, well, not that much scrolling, but still. Plus, it was only 7.30. 
Hold on. Where, where was it? Here we go. She's already done that. He keeps doing it. So the solution is to be petty. Setting a specific boundary and sticking to it is not petty. If she opens the door, he knows he can just keep doing it. Tell me you look at human beings like you're training a dog without telling me you look at human beings like you're training a dog. How many times until it's not petty in your eyes? His actions are passive, aggressive, and juvenile. See, I can throw around buzzwords too. I love this shit, man. I, I absolutely love this shit. Apparently, by the way, petty is a buzzword. I, I don't know if you've been watching the, the Merriam-Webster power rankings lately. But it's been rising the charts. It's been going crazy. Sticking to a specific, completely ridiculous boundary is dumb. If the boundary is petty to begin with, it isn't worth enforcing. There are much better ways to handle this. Minus seven. I mean, I kind of agree with some of the downvotes. Like, I don't know if it's a ridiculous boundary. Minus seven is maybe a little much. <laughs> I love that they keep bringing up challenge accepted. After saying challenge accepted, he does it again two days later, and there's no way you can convince me this was accidental. The source of a true logician. This was a power play, plain and simple. He really didn't believe she would enforce a boundary. She did. Hey, husband, it's me, OP. I'm really worried about your drinking and think you need to stop... Or seek help in quitting. I can't and won't live like this anymore. I really need to see you trying here. I'm not sure if I can keep this relationship going with you anymore, even though I love you, the adult boundary. Oh, man. <laughs> Get me out of there. Anyway. <laughs> Moving on. Um... I think that's that's a big everybody sucks there. Am I the asshole? So many not the assholes here. Congrats or sorry that happened to you or whatever. <laughs> <clears throat> Am I the asshole for shutting down my daughter's business? My daughter's school doesn't offer an online copy of most textbooks and their textbooks are heavy. So whenever her class starts a new chapter, she scans the chapter in the textbook onto her tablet, uses the tablet in class. People started asking her for copies, so she charges $5 per chapter. She has approximately 100 clients and makes around $600 and $900 a month. Holy bursh! <laughs> oh my god! Yo, okay, so I gotta be careful here. Um... Because, I mean, this is illegal, but she's also a minor, which means nothing's uh, illegal for her, right? Unless she kills someone in cold blood, she's like, she's got complete immunity to all legal proceedings. What are they going to do? Put her in juvenile hall for, for the, the, the crime of textbook scanning? I don't think so. I think she can get away with it, quite frankly. Plus, the other thing I wanted, the parents might go to jail. They can't do that. The sins of the, the, sins of the father pass to the sins of the, the, the son. The sins of the son don't pass to the father. It's a one-way transition. It's like RNA polymerase. Now, the other thing that I want to say is stealing is bad, but the textbook cartel um, honestly couldn't happen to like a, a nicer industry. Changing six words in your textbook, uh, releasing it as a new edition, charging $50 more. Uh, if you sell your book back to the campus bookstore, they give you 35 cents and then they sell it as a used book that's $10 cheaper than the new version of the book. It's, it's, a, it's a scam, man. It's a scam. So I'm not saying I support this, but I am saying it's not like she's stealing onions from the soup kitchen. You know, she's... She's putting a little dent in McGraw Hill, okay? That, that's all I'm saying. Now, let, people started, okay, she's making 600 and 900 bucks a month. Many people would say good for her. I'm not saying this is me saying good for her. I'm just saying many people would say good for her. Very creative. I didn't know she was doing this until I saw that she was making a lot of large purchases. New iPad, phone, and MacBook. Nice clothes, door dashing food at least once a week. And when I asked how she got the money, she told me. I told her that taking money from her classmates isn't okay. And told her to shut it down and she threw a tantrum because it's easy money and because her dad is fine with it. Okay. 
here's the thing, all right? It, there is a, a seed of wrongness in here. And the wrongness is that it's not her property to distribute for money. That's, that's the seed of wrongness, whether you believe that the wrongness overtakes the baseness, okay? The reason it's, it would be wrong is not because taking money from her classmates isn't okay. This is the foundation of society in almost every country across planet Earth. It, it's, it's commerce, you know, it's, it's business, you know, if you run a coffee shop, you're taking money from your customers. You're providing them a service or a product in exchange for it. What do you mean it's not okay to take money from her classmates? So some dude who just puts a bunch of oregano in Ziploc bags is able to do it, but, but helping kids study better is not, uh, it, it doesn't warrant a financial compensation? I, I, is, I can't remember. This is the, the dad or the mom. We don't know yet. Okay. I, well, maybe the mom. But either way, I think she doesn't fully understand that uh, how the world works. But maybe that's a good thing to say. Um, she's staying with my ex and won't talk to me. So I want to know if I was the asshole. Okay. So I have to come down. After being very noncommittal, I have to come down here at some point. I believe it or not actually think she's not the asshole. But I don't think it's because... Well, I would... Yeah, you know what? I'll take it a step further. I would say no assholes. I forgot that you can get a no assholes ranking as well. I would say that she's not the asshole, but not for the reasons that she put out here. Like, I don't think she's a good person in this situation for stopping her from getting money from her classmates because it seems like she's providing a great service. I mean, like, five bucks a chapter is... That's, that's a lot. <laughs> she's kind of positioning herself as, like, the new McGraw-Hill, I suppose. But, you know, either way, I, I do understand that, uh, you know, she, she thinks that's the problem. For me, the actual problem, if I put myself in her shoes, is that the odds of her facing a problem for this are probably somewhat low, but it is certainly, if not outright illegal, which it might be, um, something that she could face some serious reprimanding for, uh, which, as a parent, would would make me want to shut it down probably as well. Especially because, like, like in a way, I'd be proud of her for the having an entrepreneurial spirit. But I would also be like, this could fuck your whole life up, like, right before college, maybe, or, or, or maybe not, but I don't know. Like, I feel like if you could not get into college because you didn't join, like, the debate club in ninth grade, you also could be, like, you know, hurt your chances by running an illegal textbook piracy ring. Or maybe, alternatively, the Wharton School of Business would be like, oh, hell yeah, we're going to put you in our fast track CEO mentorship program. I'm not sure. Um, but as a parent, I, I mean, <laughs> look, this is, this is just my model for parenting, at least. Um, your role as like a high school student from ninth grade to 12th grade, like my role as a parent, feed you, mentor you, provide a safe place uh, for you to sleep and eat a sounding board for you to run the problems by me as you transition from, you know, childhood to adulthood and having more responsibilities, et cetera, et cetera. Your responsibility in high school is like, just don't fuck up so bad. That's it. Like, just, just go to school, come home, socialize a little bit, but not in like a deleterious way that you take it too far. That's what college is for. Just, you know, do your time, get out, and then out of sight, out of mind to some extent. So it, I think they are breaching the terms of the agreement right here by running an illegal textbook piracy ring. <laughs> if I was 17 and I was their friend, I would be like, that's based. I would also be like, give me all the textbooks for free or I'm going to report you to McGraw-Hill. Because 
you, you're dealing with Machiavelli. You know, you gotta you gotta have some daggers of your own, quite frankly. You know, otherwise, you, if you don't have some kind of leverage over them, they're gonna take you for everything you're work you're worth. You know, for it's, it's maybe it's five bucks a chapter in September, but then the midterms are coming up. Oh, sorry, surge pricing. Now it's twenty five bucks a chapter. I anyway, this is a a, a very like even split. <laughs> I just look and I, I understand that there's room for differences of opinion, right? I just can't imagine adults writing this and being like maybe maybe they think that the mom's the asshole for another reason, like the way she handled it, but I can't imagine being like 30 years old and being like, you should have respected your daughter's hustle and let her run an illegal textbook piracy ring. Uh, in the in her senior year of high school. Then again, I'm surprised a lot. So let's see. Isn't it illegal? Yes, it's quick money, but so is theft. Okay, yeah, the true, maybe, sort of. Not the asshole. Applaud her entrepreneurial spirit. She saw a need and uh, found a way to fill it uh, and make money. That's awesome. Point out she's committing a crime and her and her parents can be held legally, legal and financially responsible. Uh, offer to help her find legal ways to start her own business. Mm, look, number, th number C, <laughs> no, number three, great piece of advice, but I, th you know what this is? This is on Shark Tank. This is not a business. This is a product. She doesn't have a business. And for that reason, I'm out. What are, what are you going to do? Have her open up her own college bookstore? Like, it, she, she doesn't have, it, it's not scalable. You're going to buy her like a, a six scanner or something like that? I don't understand. Anyway, um, not the asshole, but not for your reasoning. There's nothing wrong with making money off your classmates if she's offering a valuable service. They're paying for convenience, but she is breaking the law. Look at this. Dude, this is like a new record. We are like, we found my exact take like three comments in. And the first two were not horrible either. The first two were, were pretty reasonable. Comment deleted by user. What she's doing is illegal. You're the asshole for your reasoning. Yeah, okay. Like, I'm, it, everybody seems to be on, like, the same page here. More power to you. Would I be the asshole if I didn't actually read my student's short story? I love a, a teaching, am I the asshole? Oh, no. Okay, get ready. Sorry for the throwaway, but I feel like this might be a tad unprofessional to ask. So out of an overabundance of caution, I don't want this attached to my main account. Oh, hold on, hold on. I just realized I got a... I, I have an urgent message to send because I forgot how uh, time zones work, okay? Not, not for the people that I'm working with for Back for Blood, but I... Hold on. I, I thought that I started an hour early. Okay, sorry. We are running... It one to two. I forgot what time it is today. There we go. Okay. See, no problem. No problem. The docket doesn't change. I just needed to send a message up the up the chain. Um, back to Reddit court. <clears throat> Anyways, on Tuesday, I assigned a creative writing assignment for my students for context. They're 11th graders. They had Wednesday to work on it, then a four-day long weekend to finish or edit it to be submitted on Monday. Okay? Now, I fucked up at two vertices. You sure you're not a math teacher? I'm teaching four classes this semester, and I assigned it to all four on the same day. So on Monday, I received about 90 short stories to read and grade. I set a minimum of one page, but did not set a maximum word count. That's tough. That's, that is bad. <laughs> I missed the part where that's my problem. I've been blowing through them at a rate of 15 a day, shortest to longest, but it's going to be much harder to keep this pace up now. The last nine are at least 4,500 <laughs> words long, but still, it's doable. But I swear to God, one of my students wrote me a novella. I ran it through a word counter, and this thing is 22,000 words long. He did this in five days. I am so tempted to just read the first chapter or two and give him 105% on the assignment, but would I be the asshole if I did that? I mean, he put in all that work, but sweet Jesus... 
Would it even harm him if I didn't? Would it just straight up be unprofessional? And it's a sci-fi story. Literally my most hated genre. I can read a short story, but I don't want to read a whole ass novella. Do I have to? Next time the cap is 10,000 words. 5,000 if it's sci-fi. I like that. Very clever. Very clever. She, you know, the teacher here, they're writing in a very... I, it's, you can tell... This is like one of the 1% of people on the internet that are able to make a complete sentence that makes coherent sense and also conjures a certain emotion in the people that are reading it. Well played. You're already anti you are the asshole points for that. You're 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 starting from ahead of the curve. So ethically speaking, do I have to read it? Edit for some extra context. He asked for an extension on Monday so he could just have time to polish it. I told him I wouldn't subtract marks from him if it's a little rough. He can just edit it on his own time. Straight up not the asshole. No, no assholes here. Like, come on. Absolutely not. The, the kid is not an asshole. If you don't, you, you, it happens sometimes. You give someone a creative piece of work. Sometimes they just got nothing to do on that weekend. You know, they might go hard. They might be like, this is my chance to really sink my teeth into this. Um, you 22,000 words is 44 pages single spaced and that's 44 pages in a word processor right like that's not 44 pages of like a paperback novel you would keep in your bathroom that's 44 single space pages pages in microsoft word so from a book context that could be 100 pages or something like that um or longer yeah, don't don't read that. That's crazy. I I know, okay, because it it's the internet logic, as well. Um, it's one hundred to one hundred and thirty pages. Holy crap! Um, the internet logic is like, well, you made the mistake by not uh, putting a maximum cap on it. As a result, you're like morally obligated uh, to to read it. Um, nah. I mean, like, you're, you're morally incentivized to read it, but, like, surely everyone agrees that there is a bound at some point where, like, the logic falls apart. Like, if somebody wrote a 700-page a novel, it, should she be compelled to read it? I think at some point you just got to be like, I'm just going to give you an A++ and move on. <laughs> If it was a short story, then the child should fail. Well, the problem with that is, as a teacher, if you fail the kid for a structural reason such as that, you open yourself up to uh, scrutiny. What I think you want to do is give them such a good mark. Because they're, they're probably insanely proud of what they wrote. So you just give them something that lines up with their expectations, and you go, you write, wow, A++. I can see you put a lot of work into this. Great job. Keep it up. And then, you know, I mean, here's the thing. What if they, if they, if they filled 50 pages in the middle with just like ASDF, 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 what are they going to do? Are they going to go um, to the principal and be like the teacher didn't read this and blow up their A++? Or are they just going to take their A++ and use that to, to bolster their GPA? I don't think they're, I don't think it's just, I, I, I don't, I don't think they're the asshole at all. That's, that's it. If he does it, he's a legend. Honestly, I don't even think the principal would reprimand the teacher for that. <laughs> I mean, it, come on. Like, just, I, I taught classes in ESL, okay? My, I'd have a class of 12, which was small. Uh, and the assignment would be like write a recipe and the recipe would be like two paragraphs and every single one was was how to make instant ramen and they were all like and check this shit out. I crack an egg in it whoa and I was like yeah so does everybody else in the class okay that is easy and in 45 minutes you could read 12 of those b plus a a a b plus you know blah 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 um but when I think back to like my you know like even my middle school career, they're teaching a class of 
30 kids, 32 kids. They got to read 32 shitty sixth grade essays about like whether or not school uniforms should be allowed or disallowed. Do you really think that they're p pouring their heart and soul into reading every single word? And <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's just, I mean, if it takes them 10 minutes to do each essay, that's reading, you know, that's three hours. That's five hours <laughs> of, uh, of reading the same shitty essay over. I'm not saying they don't read the essays. I'm just saying they don't go over them all with like a fine tooth comb, you know? They, 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 they read them in a broad sense, man. Why would they become teachers then? The same reason like 80% of people become teachers, you know? The guidance counselor in 12th grade asks, what do you want to do with your life? You spent your whole fucking life in school so far. And you're like, oh, I don't mind school. Maybe I'll just be a teacher. And then you go to school to become a teacher because it's like a stable job with a pension. And you would have a familiarity with the environment. And there's always a demand for lots of them. You know, that's the whole. That's why they, you don't know. Nobody becomes a teacher because they're like, I love reading shitty essays. Oh, I just love reading. I love listening to fourth graders give five minute speeches about Adventure Time. Come on, you know? Do you think they wouldn't want to like be the taster at the Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory if they had a choice? They're filling a societal need, and it comes with some employment benefits as well. <laughs> yeah, also, teaching is rewarding. Grading, it depends what you're grading, but, you know, grading is not fun. I can't, and I was only doing, like, you know, 15 essays a week or something like that. I can't imagine if you're, like... Uh, uh, a high school teacher who teaches like four periods of English a day. That's a lot, man. I'm not, I'm just saying you have my sympathy. Long story short, not the asshole. I, I, I've, I've got to read some of these. You are the assholes. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Not cynical at all, Kappa. It's not... It, I mean, I think it's just... It, it's not meant to be cynical. It's naive if you think, like, your essays in fifth grade were, like, making your teacher's life better. She just wants to go home, you know, have a glass of white wine, put on Everybody Loves Raymond, and, like, knock this shit out before the next day where she's got to spend all day in a, in a portable outside classroom made of, like, a retrofitted shipping container in the middle of fucking June... Shit's pure aluminum siding on all sides. Just baking in the sun like a solar cooker. And, and her company is 30 fifth graders who have no respect for her whatsoever. And then like one kid who's like, you're my new surrogate mom. Like you just, they're, the teacher is not just a teacher, right? Like they're a human being that has their own life that exists outside of work as well they don't exclusively exist in order to you know make sure you know how to spell like commitment or something like that anyway let, let's see let's let's read some of the comments here first of all this is hilarious second of all you didn't specify a short story your student wrote a novella I'd say not the asshole if you read a chapter or two and graded it 100%. If on the off chance your student asks for feedback, be honest, you had 90 stories to grade and didn't have time to read the whole thing, then say something good about what you did read. Teachers are human too. Boom. Easy. No problem. Even less complicated and more honest. Read part of the story. If the quality is good enough to warrant full credit, award full credit, then actually say I didn't read the whole thing, but the part I did read was already enough. Look, this is, the, this is not bad. This is an ethical and moral thing to do. However, have you ever heard of the expression, no good deed goes unpunished? This kid spent a whole long weekend. Probably part of the motivation for them to write the story was they're going to, oh man, I wonder what they're going to think of when, you know, the, the Cylons attack the harpsichord gate or something like that. Um, I don't think you need to provide this information unless it's asked. I don't, you, you, you can withhold a little bit of information or something like that. You don't, you don't have to send it all, you know, right out of, the, right out of the, the, the starting blocks. Yes, you're the asshole. Oh, here we go. 
Long does not necessarily mean good. It could mean drawn out, lacking focus, a variety of other problems, or it could be plain mediocre. In fact, the assessment was short stories. I'd be saying he didn't meet the objective and would likely get a worse mark. Don't care. Didn't ask. Plus, you used a semicolon in your Reddit comment. This automatically disqualifies you from being on a jury of your peers. You are, you are not the every person, okay? A good... A, by the way, if I was critiquing already, needless semicolon to reflect more positively on your intelligence than your writing warrants. Uh, we do not bold things in academic writing. We let the construction of the sentence provi provide the emphasis itself uh, without resorting to garish tactics like this. Uh, similarly, a uh, bold here and then an italic and you're doing an italic into a bold, like I feel like I'm reading a ransom note right now. It's a little too much. Let your writing speak for itself, please. A good short story is compelling and its writing is tight. Again, overuse of italics. It understands how a sentence flows to create rhythm for the reader and exploits that. It takes time, effort, and patience to do a short story. M dash, overused, much more than to get to the first draft of a novella. Oftentimes, oftentimes one word. We're going to draw a little line under that that goes like this. A different discussion would be if you stopped reading at the cutoff point for an average short story. I personally, when this situation comes up for me in real life, which happens all the time, uh, I go by the definition of 7,500-ish words, since that's what it used to be defined when sci-fi short stories were all the rage back in the 80s, but maybe the same number of pages as the next largest story. Um, objection? Irrelevant and uh, self-inflating? Italics. And grade-based... Only if the story you read was satisfactory. M dash, we've already touched upon this, as in if the payoff didn't come because the story was too long, question mark, that's because he didn't meet the actual objective of the assignment and marks are redacted accordingly. But I think that would have to be a whole different thread as well. Source, dude, just trust me. Um, so you're actually... This, this is pure insanity to me. So you are going to not... You, you didn't put a cap on the story, on the length or anything like that. The student went over the top, wrote a novella. You're not only going to not give them a good mark despite their ambition. Because, like, it's 11th fucking grade, okay? This is not the Booker Prize. It doesn't matter. You know, is it, you're not giving them, you know, a, a, a $50,000 scholarship that could have gone to somebody else that deserved it on merit. It's fucking, it's 11th grade. It's daycare. You know, get over it. Um, regardless, not only are you not going to give them, like, a good score, you're actually going to not read the whole thing, but you're going to come up in your head with a reason to mark them lower and be like, I didn't read the whole thing because of the fact that this is not a short story. So I'm not going to do the work. And then also, I'm going to be like, you almost tried to make me do more work. So you're going to get like a B minus or something like that. That's, come on, that's too much. You're, you're not like the editor of, you know, the New England Journal of Medicine. Just give them an A. And, and move on. <laughs> Does it? Oh, and then next time, you can't be like, you didn't give me a page limit. Um, or I, I didn't give you a page limit, but I said short story. And of course, you should know, given that you were born in fucking what, like 2004? You didn't know that uh, the definition of a sci-fi short story, taxonomically speaking, based in the 1980s, when they were originally popularized, was about 7,500 words? It's too much, dude, you got... You're, you got your teaching, okay? Then you got to commute home. Then you got to cook dinner. Then you got to clean up after dinner. You got to, hey, honey, how was your work day? Maybe you got your own kids to worry about. Maybe you got other tasks and errands that are going on. Oh, you got people in your family that are dealing with stuff. You got, you know, money situations to sort out. You want to watch the new episode of Scandal. All of a sudden, instead, your, base, your, your whole life is now structured around finding a good reason to not read this and then give the kid like a B as a result? I think fundamentally, no matter what, the student dramatically failed at time management. The work is unedited, which means it probably does have a lot of the flaws in there. This is roughly analogous to spending all your time doing research for a paper and then turning in a rough draft for your final grade. You haven't even read the paper! It's probably bad. Just read a chapter and then give them a C. 
How can you do this? It, it, and they, they sound like they have like some basis in science, and yet they're like, I haven't seen any evidence, but here's the conclusion that I'm going to draw from this. My, my professor, my PhD supervisor would not let me get away with this, let me tell you. Yeah, in 11th grade, I was smoking glue sticks on the back of the bus, but this would not fly in my PhD program. Anyway, sorry, I, I went a little too far. Sorry, sorry. <clears throat> the only thing with this, though, is that taking off points for something the student was proud of could discourage them immensely. Maybe OP should just write a note saying it was great, but then take the word count down a bit. I've seen a lot where a teacher reacted like this and it could take a toll on the student's efforts by a lot. Good. Good comment. I see where you're coming from, though I wonder if it's a bit babying for a year 11. That means the students are 17 to 18. I think the right way to, would be to leave a note explicitly explaining it was a good novella and I enjoyed reading it, even if I didn't, just because I don't like sci-fi, but that marks had to be subtracted because it's a novella and not a short story? Do they have to be, though? Who are you, the, the short story police? Do you, Oh, it's only a short story if it's written in Banger, Maine by Stephen King on a 72-hour coke binge? Otherwise, it's just sparkling words? I, I just don't understand the overcommitment to the name. It just doesn't make sense to me. Guess this, you won't be the asshole... For re not reading the story, but you will be the asshole if you give it 100% just because it's long. The assignment was short stories, as we all know, based on the 1980s. Those are around 7,500 words. Technically, he didn't listen to the assignment. Hey, 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 you know how you were planning on going to, I don't know, like Brown or something like that? Hey, your GPA just got fucked because technically this is not a short story, by the way. I know I didn't mention any of that in the rubric. I just said kind of go nuts, one page minimum. Technically, you're going to have to set your sights a little bit lower. There wasn't a word count. Since I couldn't know how old 11th graders are, he might be excused for not completely keeping to it. He might have just had so much fun. But a short story indeed means the writing is tight, not drawn out over multiple pages. Um, well, actually, it had a one page minimum. So if he didn't uh, draw it out over multiple pages, he would have gotten marks down. But anyway, like... Just, just as long as we're applying the same standards to this child that we should be applying to one another. Even if his writing was amazing, he didn't write a short story, therefore shouldn't get 100%, even if the writing was perfect. This is how you create the Joker. There's no, th th this is how you get a kid who ends up like writing like the next Da Vinci Code, which I'm not saying is a good book, but was very, very popular. Then they go on Conan O'Brien or something like that, and they're like, hey, uh, so you had a, yeah, you wrote uh, the first draft for this book when you were in 11th grade, and you gave it to your teacher. What did your teacher say? And the, the, it's a funny anecdote, actually, Conan, would you believe? They actually gave me a C plus because it was supposed to be a short story. <laughs> I wonder what that teacher's doing now. Oh, uh, yeah, they uh, s smashed their TV out of their sixth floor window they couldn't live with the regret. They asked Reddit how they should, you know, deal with kids. I agree with the person above. Tell the students you didn't have time to grade them yet because you're just human. That's, that's fair. All of this is fair. I just don't know why you have to find, like, a... You have to have, like, a, a, a nuclear bomb in your pocket that's, like, if your kid... If your student gets annoyed that you didn't read the whole thing, you have to be like, okay, well, technically, it was supposed to be a short story, and you wrote a novella, so here's your B-. minus. Like, it's just... It's just crazy, man. I mean, to me, I, it just seems like the teacher was like, hey, go nuts, write me a story over the long weekend. Should have put a page limit on the top of it, and then didn't. And now people are like, well, you did bake in that short story. You would be the asshole. It seems the student's enthusiastic, and as their teacher, you're plainly obligated to assess their performance. Yes, it's long, but a lesson is a lesson learned. A lesson learned is a lesson learned. Yeah, but like... It's going to take like, like two fucking hours to read that thing. Can you imagine how long it would take you to, like, read a, a two-hour-long novella and then also correct it? Like, that's... And, and, you know, like, I don't mean to be rude, but, like, also... 
we're all on the same page that this probably sucks, right? Like, it's written by a kid. I'm not saying it sucks relative to the other students' writing. It might be the best. But compared to the kind of thing that you would deliberately, like, buy from a bookstore and read yourself, it's going to be, like, you know it's going to be garbage, right? <laughs> With no editing or revision whatsoever, like, it's going to be... It's not going to be a great two hours, I think. Anyway. Interesting. Mm, interesting. But nevertheless, I imagine you'd ding your students for half-assing an assignment, right? What difference is it for you to half-ass the grading? I don't know. Maybe that one student isn't doing 90 assignments, uh, whereas one teacher is grading 90 assignments. I'm not saying you have to read the entire essay, but you would definitely be the asshole if you didn't. just no empathy whatsoever it's just the the english language is not like emotions wrapped up in words for some people it's like it's it's byte code you know that there's there's a smart contract that was signed by the teacher and all the students when the assignment was presented for her to not follow through on her form of the uh, her role in the transaction is Ridiculous, you know, like she can't do it. It, it. it undermines the faith that we have in the education system. Anyway, throw me a slash marker here. Slash marker. React. 